Okay. Hi guys. I apologize now I'm using my phone and it's only because I started to work on this project and then realized I should probably be filming this and my surface is upstairs so I just pop my phone on the um, mount here. So I'm doing some more resin um, art but I wanted to show you guys some things I picked up to kind of help me along the way here which I hope will help us along the way. So the first thing is, if you didn't see my video with the jewels we already made, here they are. They are completely hard now. Um, but the thing you'll notice is that there is a lot of air bubbles. So I really am trying now to, now that I figured out how to mix it, how to put the colors in there, I want to try to do it where there's not a lot of air bubbles and the other thing is I need to make sure that I'm filling the molds all the way I forgot to mention this the other day see how there's I mean I don't think anybody's gonna notice again it was my first time and Leah's gonna be playing with these guys but they came out pretty very nice some cool colors Oops. and again with most resin you want to work in a well-ventilated area. Um, this resin is from Unicorn Art. Um, I picked it up off of Amazon. I'll link my previous video that had all the, the in, um, stuff in there. I also got these silicone molds. And so this diamond, I know one of you guys had said, can you not unmount it? But I had already unmounted it. Um, but again, I didn't fill the mold all the way up to the top. So you want to make sure that that is filled completely to the top. It did kind of sink in a little bit there on the top portion. Um, and the mold, this one has a lot of gold fleck in it and it's still a lot of air bubbles. So that's what I want to work on today is trying to get less air bubbles. But this is... This is pretty heavy. I mean, I have it on my desk as a paperweight. But I got the, again, that's using the Unicorn Art um, resin. And you, you, you get both parts. That's the eight fluid ounces there. And then I bought this cat, kit of all these little silicone molds. And it came with the little stir sticks. Um, so the that. And then while I was out at... Michael's the other day, I saw in the baking aisle this little cake tray. So it's a silicone mold cake tray. And you want to make sure that it is clean. So I just have a, a can there. I'm just going to clean the mold out. You, you want to make sure there's no dust debris, none of that stuff in there. So just clean that out real quick. I'm only going to do one, one right here. I have a little toothpick to try to help pop air bubbles. I also found this cupcake fondant mold, which is again made out of silicone, but it has this beautiful design. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think I'll make anything today with it, but I was thinking if I put a colored silicone down into those fine lines and then put a colored resin, sorry, not silicone, resin, and then put some resin over top that it would probably make a pretty cool design. But that's, that's for another day for that one. Um, so one of the videos I watched online showed how to get rid of air bubbles. So I wanted to share that trick with you guys. Of course, you can use your heat tool. Um, I do have my embossing gun. I also have this little, um, propane torch here. Um, but they said if you take your bowl and I've mixed up my resin already and put it in another bowl full of warm water, you will see the bubbles dissipate. And I did do that and you guys can... I don't know if you can see, it is much clearer. There was a lot of air bubbles in there, and this is way better. Now, there's still a couple bubbles in there, and I'm just using an old yogurt cup that I cleaned out, but the bubbles did disappear. So uh, that's one of the tricks here is if you have another container, it's a larger container, put warm water in there. It's like a water bath. Set that in there for the minute, and you want to leave the stick in there, <clears throat> and the bubbles will start to pop. All right, and so this was a few minutes ago. It's not, you can see it's still pretty um, fluid. It's not starting to set up or anything, so we have a few minutes there. So I want to try to pour some of this in the bottom of the mold, and I want to kind of make like a little coaster. 
And I'm sorry, I don't have the exact measurements for you guys. Looks like that was just enough resin too to do that. I'm really having fun with these and thinking about different project ideas I can do. I was really thinking I was just going to use them on my um, poured paint paintings, but um, I might look into some other resin companies or maybe some larger batches of resin. And I'm doing this on my Tim Holtz tonic glass media mat, so I'm really not worried about making a mess because that'll scrape right off. All right, so that's pretty full. I know you guys can't see, but there are a few air bubbles in there. So I'm just going to take the heat gun to it. I'm going to move my little plastic cup out of the way here. <coughs> and again, you don't have to have a little butane torch. You can use your heat gun as well to do this. And you just slightly rub it over the top. And you will see, now I can see through the glare with my lights that um, those bubbles are popping. And because um, you just want to make sure that you're pulling away from the mold because that is silicone. We don't want to melt that. I know it's, it's heat resistant, but still this is a direct open flame here. Okay, that is like 99.9% .9 clear there. I do see a little speck of dust right here. Now, this will be the bottom of the mold. The other side on the bottom will be the top of the mold. So you want to make sure you're using... A pretty slick surface. I don't know how this is going to come out. This is my first time using it. It may have a little bit of texture to it because <clears throat> these molds are very, very smooth. This one is a little bit matte, but we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to hit it one more time. It looks like there's some bubbles rising. I'm just going to take this mold and push it down on the desk a little bit to try to coax those bubbles to the top. <clears throat> And if you guys have already worked on something like this, I appreciate any kind of advice or hint that you can give to me and the other viewers that are on here. Because again, this is only my second time, third time doing this. So I'm still very new to this. <clears throat> okay, so I just want to drop in some alcohol ink colors. I have my Tim Holtz inks and my Pinata inks all here. Um, I think that they're all... Pretty competent. The other thing I wanted to try to do this time was maybe put some glitter in here. I was looking to see what kind of chunky glitter I have. I don't know that I have too much chunky glitter. I think I'll try this. This is a Nuvo. I think this is called Mirror. Yeah, Mirror Ball. It's a very kind of holographic looking. And I was thinking of putting a little tiny scoop of that in and then putting the alcohol ink on top of it, hoping that the alcohol ink would help it drop down, you know, from the weight. So I'm a little tonic scooper here. I'm just going to sprinkle that in and I don't want to go too crazy with it. We're just going to do a little bit there. It's already dispersing. Now I want to just lay some colors down. I think I kind of want to try to do like a rainbow pattern. Um, this is red pepper. So I'm just going to start on this end and then... That might have been too much. We'll just start to move our way towards the center. The other thing I wanted to try to do was add some of this white... From what I understand, the white is super heavy and that'll drop down to the bottom just like the gold does. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to put some of that in there. Now that alcohol ink is actually pushing, pushing the glitter out of the way.
That was pumpkin, I believe. Dandelion is next. And I don't know if any of you guys saw the blog hop is going on right now for the new release from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. So you can check my Love Llama video and comment on that and you will be entered um, if you follow along with the blog hop um, with the other um, designers with their cards, some beautiful new stamps in the release. Then you'll be entered to win some free stamps. So go check out my Llama Love and then down in the description of the Llama Love card is um, the other artists that you can hop along with. Um, that green was citrus. Very light, bright lime green. I'm going to go in with some mermaid. And it's neat because you can see how the alcohol ink is just kind of moving and the glitter is moving. I am still waiting for my pearl alcohol inks to come in. Now, clearly, in using this for crafting, I would definitely not recommend cooking out of this. This is going to be a, a craft-only silicone uh, mold. I do not recommend going up and making cookies with this after it's been touched by silica, or, uh, resin and alcohol inks. Um, I, uh, I think this purple one is called like Dusk or something like that. It's, I don't know what the name of it is. It's in Spanish. I'm sorry. And then we're going to finish this end corner with some flamingo. And we're going to put some of that white. Now, this white is a pinata white. And the weight of this, like the density of it, it's a heavier uh, ink. So it will push down on the colors and give this kind of cool effect. They call it the Petri dish effect because it blooms. And what I mean by that is it actually pushes down into the alcohol inks and when you flip it over it looks like these tiny little microorganisms almost like little mushrooms are blooming up so they go down into the alcohol ink and pop up on the bottom there i'm very tempted to take the toothpick and stir this but i don't know if that would be a good idea eh, why not i want to get this glitter to kind of drop down Another idea I had was to let some of these settle for a minute and then um, once the resin starts to harden, go in and put a design into it by just stirring it around with the toothpick. But maybe that'll be an experiment for another day. And again, remember, we're looking at the bottom here of the, well, we're hoping will be the bottom of the, the coaster or whatever you want to make this into. The design. So we have glitter going this way and then white going this way. I feel like all the color is kind of concentrated in the middle there. And this glitter is stuck over here. The glitter really does not, did not sink down at all. I'm going to put some more of the white in and see if we can get some more of that bloomy effect. Maybe we can get it over here to mix with the glitter. It does look pretty.
Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to give this 24 to 48 hours to cure. And then I'll do a follow-up video and show you where we're at with it. If you have any questions, post them down below. I will um, link the other video on the gems that I did so you guys have the comments um, as to what the supplies were that I used. And again, if you've done resin art before and you have any tips or tricks for me and for our viewers, certainly I'm, I'm always looking for any comments or questions that you guys have that will help all of us learn along the way. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.